with Scott Hunter, Director of Program Management at Microsoft, who came all the way from Seattle just to be here at .NET. So, how are you feeling? Are you happy to be here? I'm awesome. It's awesome to be here. I'm, I'm done now, so I'm really happy. You're relieved, right? Yes. Everything went okay? Everything went great. All the demos went great, and people yeah. seem to like the technology, so I'm very happy. Awesome, because it's your second time here. You were here last year, right? I was here last year, too, yes. Do you think there's like any difference? Do you feel like there's it's, more people? It's bigger this year. Yeah, it's bigger definitely bigger this year. This year. Awesome. So can you tell me a bit more about what you talked today? Yeah, so I talked about, you know, I work on .NET, mm -hmm. and we're always trying to make .NET better. And so today we talked about machine learning and how we make machine learning easier for everybody to consume. We talked about big data a little bit. Um, we talked about Blazor, which is this uh, full stack development you can do on .NET Core. Um, and then at the end, we started talking about .NET 5, which is the next version of .NET, where we take all of the .NETs we have today, uh, .NET Framework, uh, Mono and .NET Core and merge them back together into a single unified .NET again. That sounds awesome. What do you think are the key takeaways, like the key features that you announced, especially on, uh, you announced features on .NET Core 3.0, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the biggest one for me would be the full stack web development with Blazor. Um, a lot of developers today, you know, are trying to build these new modern web apps using frameworks like Angular and React. Um, and in most of these cases, you're actually mixing a bunch of technologies together and a bunch of technology stacks. Um, so with Blazor, you basically can use C-sharp everywhere. You can use MS Build everywhere. Um, and hopefully, it'll, it'll make it easier to build these types of applications, and they'll, they'll, they'll version better than, the, than they would with uh, if you're using Angular or React. There's a new one of those every three or four weeks in some cases. Um, and so you're always chasing those. Uh, we're hoping that .NET will be s more stable and slower than that. Um, and so your applications can stay the same and still be very modern. So you think developers will be happy about that? Yeah, I think so. And you also talked about the future of .NET platforms. So you talked a bit on, on .NET, .NET 5. 5. What is coming? You said that you, you have a roadmap on what's coming for the next year. The, yeah. The, the, you the, have everything planned, right? Yeah, more than I expected, actually. Yeah. Some, sometimes yeah. It, you're, you're like, what are we going to do the next year? <laughs> And right now, we kind of know what we're going to do for the next year or maybe even two years. The, the, the big thing is we're bringing what, what we call native development to .NET. So today, when you build a .NET application, as you run it on your machine, behind the scenes, unknown to you, it's actually converting the code you have in a machine, uh, machine code on the fly. Um, and that causes us to use more memory and to be a little bit slower in some cases. Um, so we announced today, as part of .NET 5, that we're going to take, we're going to support native as well, which means you can compile your .NET app to a single native exe, um, so you get the best startup performance, you get the smallest size uh, on any device. Um, today, that's only been available for Xamarin, which is the Android and iOS, and now we're bringing that to everything. So, if you want to build a .NET microservice and run it in a container, uh, that might be a 10 or 20 meg executable that contains all of your code versus installing a framework or something on the machine. So now let's talk about how do you figure out what kind of features do you introduce to .NET? Like, do you listen to the community? Do you have like some ideas yourself? Like, how do you do it? We do a bunch of things. First off, um, this is what I tell all people in the computer science field, watch tech news. Uh, <laughs> the biggest thing is stay current on the trends that are happening. So, you know, trends that have happened in the past where we went to APIs became a big deal when mobile came out. Mobile came out, that was a big deal. Um, now, like the, the Blazor stuff, that was uh, WebAssembly came out. The idea behind WebAssembly is you can compile any language into code that can run in a browser. And so, while we support .NET, there's also support for C++ and Java and a variety of other texts. So, a lot of what we do is looking at um, the trends in the in the in the space and developer space all up. Another thing is we also, we actually also experiment. So, for example, Blazor uh, was actually a demo at NDC. Uh, London a couple years ago um, that Steve Sanderson and our team threw together in like four days um, and who, who would have thought that that would have turned into an actual product. Uh, SignalR, another one of our products, was the same thing. It was a demo done at a conference uh, that two years later turned into a product. Um, I almost showed a demo of something <laughs> today that's another one of those. So it's, it's a combination of walk, watching tech trends, following what our competition's doing, um, and then also just running some crazy experiments because you have to do stuff even outside of what the norm is just to see what happens. And we'll run an experiment and, and just see, what, see where it goes. Some, some succeed, some don't. Even that, like the ML.net and the model builder, that that we showed, I showed in the demos today, that was an experiment we ran internally about six months ago. And uh, we, got it, we showed it even to Satya Nadella, who's the CEO of Microsoft. He saw that same demo uh, a couple months ago. 
That sounds awesome. So is there any way um, you listen also the, to the community? Because of course the developer community is very important. Yeah, so if you, want to, if you want to influence us from the community side, most of that happens in GitHub. So obviously .NET is completely open source in GitHub. And if you want to start a thread, you basically file an issue on some part of .NET saying, why does it work this way? Or it should do this instead? Or have you thought about this? Um, and so the team is heavily engaged with thousands of, of, of issues that are filed against us pretty much all the time. So it's, I don't know how my team actually keeps up with it. I keep up with the ones that, that are, that cause the most trouble, I would say. <laughs> um, but uh, there is so much discussion but a lot of what we do in .NET is from that. So it's, it's, the, you know, it's the community in GitHub, it's following trends, and it's running experiments. That's very nice. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure having you here. Thanks, glad to be here, and I hope I'm here again. Thanks. Thank you.